I grew up in a small town in central Nebraska where bobsled is not popular at all, or wasn't at least when I was growing up. Um, yeah, my graduating class was about 25 kids and a very, very small high school. So, you know, everybody in the school plays all sports uh, or pretty close and, you know, they have to just to, to form a team. So I grew up playing football, basketball, uh, baseball in the summertime. I ran track and uh, was just always outside all the time, um, you know, with the, the neighborhood kids. And it's just kind of how I grew up. Uh, had the opportunity to try out for the Nebraska football team. Uh, I was on an academic scholarship at the university. So, uh, yeah, I had a tryout for the team. I made it that way. Uh, and so, you know, when you join a division one team that way, you know, you have scholarship athletes, walk-ons, and then me. And so I was scout team running back for a couple of years and, uh, slowly worked my way up the depth chart, uh, moved from offense to defense and, uh, got some playing time on special teams. Uh, but by the time I was graduating, I, you know, I wasn't really going to the NFL. I kind of saw that was not in the cards for me. So uh, I met a girl that ran track at Nebraska, and she was recruited to be on the women's bobsled team. Uh, Amanda Morley uh, is her name. And uh, at that time, yeah, she was uh, asked to join the, the women's national team and was looking for somebody to train with. And so I decided just to train with her without the true expectation to make the team myself. But uh, after Talking with her and getting to know the sport, yeah, I gave it a shot and uh, it went pretty well. And that's gonna, I don't want to give you a half hour answer here, I guess, but no, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways I could to go with that. Um, yeah, the venue for a bobsled race is obviously about a mile long. And so that makes it pretty unique where, you know, there were tens of thousands of fans there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many. Um, and, you know, they're, they're spread out all the way down the track. And uh, it's kind of cool to, you know, get the, you know, almost every, every fan is within 10 feet of the track. You know, there's no row 98 up at the, you know, the, the top of the arena. You know, everybody is right there on top of the action. And so everybody that's yelling and screaming, you know, at some point you're hearing it the whole time. Uh, and I think that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, what little side story here, I guess, that was pretty awesome was there's about 50 people from, my hometown or, you know, Polk County area that went up to Vancouver to watch the race. And, uh, you know, they're used to outdoor sporting events. And I think they expected some tailgating to be going on. So they were there about four hours early. Um, not a lot of tailgating, you know, no propane gas grills out in the parking lots of, of the Olympics, you know, so, uh, but they were there so early, they got into the venue and were like front row seats at the finish line. And uh, so when we crossed the finish line and you know, I look to celebrate with my teammates on the left side of the, of the, uh, the track and getting our sled out of the track and stuff. And I look over and my brother and cousin are on the right side, you know, almost in the front row with the photographers. And uh, so it was really cool to get a chance to see them. And then they hung around so long, of course, that they eventually got to go on to the, the, uh, the flower ceremony podium with me and got some pictures taken. And so that was pretty cool. Yeah, and, that's awesome. you know, I, I know that, you know, at Nebraska, we traveled to, at that time, we were the Big 12, and, you know, we traveled to Texas A&M, we traveled to Penn State, you know, we were at Texas, Oklahoma, uh, and then, of course, Memorial Stadium, and so we competed in front of, you know, 80, 90, 100 plus thousand people yelling, screaming, going crazy, and it's loud there, um, but it's a different feeling at a bobsled race when, you know, fans are five feet from you with a cowbell, too, so it's, Pretty cool aspect of our sport. Yes, I think we, my teammates and I had a lot in common uh, that developed over time. You know, initially, uh, okay, so for three Olympics, I was on three different teams. Uh, Holcomb, Steve Holcomb was my driver for each one of those. But uh, the other two push athletes on my four-man teams were different each time. And so I'd say each one of those teams had kind of a different personality uh, to them. In 2006, I was definitely the, the young guy on the team and pretty wide-eyed. And I really leaned on uh, the veteran athletes to kind of guide me and, and show me, you know, how to prepare for the race, how to handle the Olympic pressure, you know, how to get around in the Olympic Village, that sort of stuff. And so I'd say that team, we had a lot of fun because we were the underdogs. We were USA 2. And uh, it made it pretty lighthearted and we can just relax and compete. 
And that actually turned out to, to help us. We got sixth place, which was pretty good for USA two at that time. Uh, 2010, the other the two guys on my sled at that time, the other two push athletes, uh, we had success early on in that four year quad. And so by the time the 2010 Olympics came around, we had won the world championships the year before. We knew that we could do well at the Olympics. We were USA one, we were one of the favorites going into that race. And so that was a different uh, aspect going into that race. We had some pressure on us, um, some internal pressure definitely, but we also had that expectation that we were going to win. And uh, again, that's, that was our focus, was winning. It wasn't just competing and having fun. Now we were there to win. And so we did everything, you know, crossed every T and dotted every I to, to help us prepare. And I'll, I'll say that uh, that included, you know, alternate routes to the track the morning of the race, just in case there was traffic, you know, the tiniest things, you know, we were prepared for, we, we were ready to go. Um, 2014, now we were the defending champions, uh, USA was, and so there was a little bit of different type of pressure on that team. Um, and I'll say that our, our push crew was uh, arguably better than we were in 2010. We had a different sled and, uh, you know, there's some things working against us, trying to compete in Russia, not as much experience on that track. And obviously the, the Russian uh, doping scandal, all of those things kind of played against us a little bit. So you know, the, the odds were stacked, uh, not in our favor. Uh, but again, the, the mindset of that team uh, was uh, you know, definitely there to win and there to succeed. But personally, I knew that was my last Olympics too. And so I was there and I watched a couple other events and I was uh, being a fan of the USA as well as is there to compete too. So I know that's, again, a long answer to your question, but that's kind of, each team was very different. So. I was always learning, I guess, as I went, of course, and the first, uh, well, I'd never seen a bobsled in real life until I tried out. And so, you know, most athletes don't. Um, but when I got to uh, Calgary for my tryout, it was right before the season started. And it was kind of after most of their open tryouts. And so it was kind of an individual tryout. Um, but yeah, it, it went pretty well. I did some sprints and some lifting and some uh, dynamic jumps just to kind of prove I was an athlete. And then, uh, I was taken to the, the ice house, which is an indoor practice facility, if you're familiar with that at all. But um, at the ice house, yeah, they, they basically said, you know, here are the shoes we wear, here's a sled, push it. You know, and I did that a few times and they said, okay, well, you know, now try pushing with your hands in this position, okay? Now try, you know, running, you know, with your knees in this position and, and that sort of thing. And so over the first few weeks, yeah, it, it was a steep learning curve. Um, but I was able to catch on pretty quick and I'll, I'll give credit to uh, the coaches that I had at that time teaching me, but also coaches that I had growing up, you know, they were always good about giving instruction and, and I was the type of athlete that listened to that instruction. Mm -hmm. So uh, it went pretty well. Uh, yeah. And then the next season, it was constantly learning about, you know, how to travel internationally while training, how to eat, you know, when, when you're in, you know, dark, part, dark parts of Germany and, you know, it's not easy to, uh, to get good nutrition or, you know, stuff like that. Um, but then I'll also add, psychologically, uh, it took me a few more years to really learn how to approach a race. Um, you know, because we push once or, you know, twice a day, maybe for, you know, four or five seconds. And so there's a lot of, uh, mentality that, that goes into that, you know, how do you get as fired up as you can and let it all out at once. And, uh, and I'll, I'll say that it took me a couple seasons to learn how to do that. But by 2006, which would be my six, uh, second year in the sport, I feel like I was close to putting together a, a whole package and, and yeah. So yeah. a couple years. Yeah. Is a, is a <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of those moments. Um, again, when I first started training with Amanda, I didn't even have the goal of trying out or even making the team. And, you know, the, the, the goals that I had along the, my entire career continued to change and continued to be updated, I guess, because of the situation I was in. So, you know, yeah, once I decided to try out for the team, you know, I flew up to Calgary to, to meet up with the, the men's team where they were training at that time. And I remember getting off the plane 
thinking, you know, I may meet this coach, he may laugh at me and I'll be on the plane headed back tomorrow. I may meet this coach and he's going to think I'm the greatest athlete ever and we're going to win gold medals. And I kind of assumed it would be somewhere in between. But uh, yeah, that was the approach I had going in. And then, you know, I'd have a little success. Well, that formed my next goal. And, you know, I meet that goal and well, that developed into the next goal. And of course, you know, over 10 years, kind of uh, made a career out of changing my goals, but, you know, always having a, something to strive for. That might have been the, the biggest change, I guess, is, you know, in, in football, you know, we had a, a whole scheme, you know, and how things were going to start to play out in the first half. And if, you know, we need to make adjustments, we can do that. You know, offense, defense, they have their uh, approach because they also have to play off their opponent. Mm-hmm. You know, in bobsled, we don't have a, an offense or defense. There's not a, an opponent. You know, it's just you focused on what you can do. And that was a, a pretty big difference, I guess. You know, so when it came down to race, day is that you control everything um, you can't control the weather and some other you know external factors of course but you control your performance um, so that was uh, one big difference I guess when it came from being on a team sport to approaching just that one single push and giving everything you got and making sure that everything is perfect you know it's coming down to the hundreds of a second aoi, aoi, You know, bobsled, you know, as we've been talking about, it's a sport where, you know, you've been training for it for a long time um, and your skill set uh, just has been been used in different sports. Now you can apply it to, to bobsled. And uh, um, I don't know many other sports that that's possible. Um, and I know they have the next Olympic hopeful to where they're, you know, recruiting for athletes, you know, in uh, uh, track cycling and bobsled skeleton and uh, what I think canoe kayak or something like that as well. So rowing. Um, so there are maybe a few sports where, you know, you can get into it later in life, but, you know, I think it's pretty unique um, in bobsled, you know, where you can start post-college and, uh, and really get into the sport that way. So, um, yeah, it's you know, one thing that made my whole entire athletic career from, you know, t-ball all the way up through bobsledding uh, pretty fun because, again, I got to do a wide variety of sports and, and had a blast doing it. Yes and no, I guess I'll, I'll say, you know, it's uh, the history of bobsled in the United States is, is long um, and it kind of had moments of success, but those moments of success were in the, the 20s, the 40s, and, uh, and then a little bit of success in 2002, winning a couple medals on our home track in, in Salt Lake City, um, but it wasn't quite the gold medal elite type of success. So, you know, I, I learned, you know, to, to follow uh, you know, and respect the sport in a way, you know, and it was kind of fun learning the history of the sport that way. Um, but that was, again, same thing as Nebraska football as well. Growing up, you know, I had this, you know, I always wanted to wear the, you know, the end, I guess, and, and you know, always wanted to, to play for Nebraska. That was always the goal growing up. But, you know, bobsled was never like a lifetime, lifelong goal that I had. Um, but yeah, I, I guess when I joined the team and got to know the other guys, it was pretty fun. Um, you know, my, my early teammates were, uh, one, actually one athlete went to, uh, West Point, um, graduated from the army Academy. Um, you know, other teammates were from Texas and Salt Lake city and Boston and, uh, you know, Washington state and, you know, just all over the place. And, you know, and they, they knew about Nebraska football. Again, this is early two thousands where, you know, we were competing for a little bit more than what they are now <laughs> say that, but, uh, it's kind of reality. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the other guys, and I think, uh, to some degree, you know, they respected my athletic background already, you know, when I, I came to the sport for that reason. Surprisingly, we are, you know, of course, looking for athletes that are, you know, looking to come out of, of high school, you know, but, you know, college is a, an opportunity that most athletes, uh, don't want to pass up and we can't blame them for that. But, uh, you know, developing, you know, as you're, an older teenager into your early 20s, it's a really important time for, for bobsledding. And uh, again, I think even though our sport seems very one dimensional, you know, sprint straight, you know, there's no lateral movements, you know, and you only have to go for about four or five seconds. It seems like a very simple sport to train for. But I would argue that our best athletes 
in the sport come from a, a, a wide range of background. Um, you know, competing in a lot of sports, uh, we have a lot of decathletes, you know, if they do come from track, you know, so they uh, have a, a very athletic ability. It's not just, you know, focus on one single sprint uh, and, and that's it. So yeah, I, I tell athletes when they want to get into bobsled, you know, if you're going to train, work on being able to, to jump high. And I know it's very general, I guess, but, uh, you know, being explosive is important for nearly every sport. You know, almost every sport uses some type of plyometrics uh, to train. And uh, I think that's a good background to have is to be very explosive. Um, but again, that's in almost every sport. So continue to focus on, on those uh, explosive movements.